Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video I'd like to talk to you about interest rates because they are super super interesting and at the same time very very important. Interest rates lie at the center of economies. Um, central banks can decide to increase or decrease an interest rate and with that they actually affect people, businesses and the economy. And because of this importance, interest rates and with that central banks' monetary policy lies at the center of this video. So without any further ado, let's jump into the topic. Interest rates are very important because they affect consumption, they affect savings, and they affect manufacturing. Uh, and with that, all sorts of investments actually. Because the interest rate that the central bank determines actually becomes the baseline for all sorts of other interest rates, such as consumer credit, such as for example the interest that you get from the bank, and such as for example investment credit. So. Think about it, when interest rates decrease, suddenly consumption becomes cheaper because you can get consumer credit. And with that, you can do whatever purchase you want to do. Cheaper um, consumption credit, because of that, oftentimes makes you um, consume more. And of course, this spurs the economy. Savings, however, become less attractive because you know if you're going to put your money on the bank, you of course at least want to be compensated for um, inflation. And at the same time, you have to think about you know what else could I do with this money? If you don't get a lot of interest from the bank, or if at least the interest rate is going down, it of course also will mean that you know saving becomes much less attractive. If you think about investment, actually very much the same thing counts as normal consumption. When interest rates go down, uh, again, getting credit for all sorts of investment, particularly so for manufacturing that might be even more so capital consuming, you know, it will become much cheaper. You know, you are oftentimes earlier going to get back the return on investment. And because of that, again, decreasing the interest rate will spur economic growth because it will not only increase consumption, at the same time, it will also increase investment. Of course, there's a flip side to this whole story, because if you make people consume more, if you make people spend more, also invest more, if people are going to save less, or if people are going to sit much less on their money, this means that suddenly the expenditure of money, um, so the supply of money, is going to increase, uh, but the demand for it, so the amount of products, the amount of services, they are kind of going to stay fixed, especially if you see big jumps, um, big decreases in the interest rate. Then what you will see then is that um, the demand and supply rule is going to work in favor of inflation. You will have much more money on the market through credits through borrowing, uh, but you will have kind of the same amount of goods and services. This is going to lead to inflation. Inflation is of course harmful to the economy because it will, make sh uh, it will prevent you from seeing the future. You won't know what tomorrow prices are going to be. It will lead to a less interesting climate uh, for companies because they will of course have to balance uh, their workers' wage with this inflation and so on. So the central bank, of course, it wants to spur economic growth, but not just at the cost of everything. It has to think about how much is this going to hurt my economy. And you can't just increase money supply unlimitedly. You have to think about inflationary pressures that are going to come with this. Especially if you are a small country, this is going to be even more so important. For the US, for example, this is much less important because the US dollars, of course, used all over the world. And so uh, increasing monetary supply, increasing consumption, increasing um, investments, um, this is going to have much less of an effect because the dollar is used all over the world. Still, also for the US, it counts that they can't keep on for the you know, rest of um, the time span, uh, increase the money supply because there is a limit to it. So the opposite of this whole story, of course, also counts. When interest rates goes up, consumption becomes less interesting because consumption becomes more expensive because consumer credits become more expensive. At the same time, investment and manufacturing, of course, will also get a hit because, again, especially capital investments, capital intensive investments will get a big hit because you need to borrow a lot. But if this is expensive, you might want to postpone this investment but you know saving will become more interesting because the interest rate is going to go up and you know saving will become suddenly much more attractive compared to other means of spending money generally speaking um, 
you know, interest rates have two effects, two sides of a medallion. And because of that, it's very important to think of as a central bank what you're going to do so. Also, because there's also global impact to uh, interest rates. If you have high interest rates as a country, you will also be able to attract money from all sides of the world, especially if your interest rate is higher than inflation and all sorts of other costs related to foreigners getting your money and putting the money on the bank. So if globally speaking, if you have high interest rates, real high interest rates, meaning that the interest rate is really also higher than inflation, is also higher than the cost of capital in all sorts of ways, then hiking uh, the interest rate will also lead to your currency uh, gaining strength uh, because it will lead to much more demand for your currency because investors are going to get interest for it in return. And so it's not only a natural impact that we see that interest rates have and that central banks have, of course, but there's also a global um, impact. And so central banks are, of course, thinking about their own economy, about consumption, savings, and manufacturing, but are also thinking about the global uh, competition. And central banks with that are, of course, also in close competition with all sorts of other central banks all around the world. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe buttons. I wish you all the best in the world, and hope to again see you soon. Take care.